Glad you could join me again today. We're continuing our look at uh, self-care and we're going to look at medicine for the soul today. You know, sometimes I think that people forget or they overlook healthy ways to feed their soul, their inner man. They get caught up in the nasty now and now or the heavy burdens that they're carrying. They just fail to remember the importance of inner or spiritual self-care. There's a passage in Ephesians 4.16 that I remember when it came alive to me. It's a prayer that Paul is praying for the Ephesians. And he comes down and he says he prays that they would be strengthened by, by with might by God's Spirit in their inner man. And that's my prayer for you today. We're going to look at our inner man just a little bit and see what kind of things we can do to doctor him up, you might say. I came across this little list of medicines for the soul that just blessed my heart. And so we're going to look at them and we're going to see if we can take a dose or two to sweeten up our lives. It reads that food is medicine, rest is medicine, movement is medicine, gratitude is medicine, laughter is medicine, and love is medicine. So we're going to look at those few things today. Let's start with food. You know, food is medicine. We need food, don't we? It's We have to have food to live. Food and water, two basics to life. And it makes an interesting study to look in the Bible at all the different things about food. And when we think of it as medicine, I think you'll be surprised at the way the Bible talks about it. So if we start in Genesis with Adam and Eve in the garden, they were given every herb and fruit and vegetable freely for them to eat. And then once they got kicked out of the garden and became carnivores, God then eventually gives them a list of clean and unclean animals. And there's an old book called None of These Diseases. It's interesting to read because the book goes through and explains why some of the things that God restricted, uh, how they would poison a person's body, what, what things they should, uh, what bad things, the elements they would have in them. It makes it an interesting study. But anyway, when we come to the New Testament, uh, we get over with Peter and we see that God releases these restrictions uh, about the clean and unclean animals. And then as we move on, God uses food. We see him using it for Elijah with depression. We see him talking about overeating in the book of Proverbs. He calls himself the bread of life. So food has a lot of uh, mention in the Bible, a lot of purpose, more than just making our mouth happy. And I wish we had time to look at figs and olive trees and all these different things in bread. God has so much to say about food, but food is medicine. So make sure you're putting in good food into your body. Self-care means that we're going to maintain a good diet. And one of moderation that we talked about, learning to say no and balance. And that's not easy to do. It really requires a lot of understanding and self-control, but the benefits greatly outweigh the self-restraint. And I think we'd all agree with that, even if we had a donut for breakfast. Rest is medicine. We looked at Matthew chapter 11 last week. And you shall find rest for your souls. And oh, how we need this rest. And as we talked about last week there, it's just not a rest of sleeping at night, but it's rest of soul. It's resting in the Lord. And that rest assures us of his presence. It's rest that recognizes his sovereignty, rest that lays down our cares at his feet because he's the one that designed our day. He's the one that understands what, hap what is happening. Rest that means we don't have to figure everything out to make everything happen or to find an answer to every question. Rest that just um, makes us unrushed and gives us that precious time with Jesus. There's, there's no balm or no medicine like that. I love the two verses in Hebrews in chapter 4 and verses 9 and 10. They read, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. And there was a time in my life when I felt that I was too busy to rest, that rest was a waste of time, that rest was unproductive. But God stopped me in my tracks when I saw that one phrase there where it says God did from his. God rested. I don't think he necessarily needed to because he's God. But he set an example for us. Rest is necessary. That's a part of why he initiated or appointed the Sabbath. But in today's society, we seem to think we can go 24-7 without effect. And what happens? We burn out. 
our health goes down, and we never have enough time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And that's not what God intended. Rest is medicine. It gives the body time to rejuvenate, and it makes space for the mind and the soul to commune with God. Even in Ecclesiastes, God tells us several times to take time to enjoy the fruit of our labors, to rest, to eat, and be merry. This is the gift of God, he says. So you need this medicine, and I do too. And so God offers it. Rest is a medicine. Movement is the next thing. Movement is a medicine. Having a sedentary lifestyle wreaks havoc on your body. We are designed to move. That's why we have limbs and joints and things like that. By moving and doing exercise and exerting energy, we pump blood and nutrients through our body, and it just works better when all the channels are flushed and cleansed. I know the Bible says that bodily exercise profited little, but that doesn't mean exercise is of no value. I have found that a 20-minute walk, just a 20-minute walk, gives me time to think, things through, it revives my energy, and I can get back on track. So movement is medicine because it creates a change, not only in our physical body, but also in our mental health. Movement is a basic component of self-care. So get off that couch and slide into those walking shoes, walk around the block, get moving. Gratitude is a medicine. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks, right? And I know you've heard that before. But if we take the opposite, I think you'll see the medicinal benefits of gratitude. Think of it this way. If you are ungrateful, you will shrivel. When you're thankful, you grow. When you're negative, you're dark. When you are positive, you shine. This yin-yang, positive-negative influence is powerful medicine. My husband tells a story of a car that we had that was hard, hard to start. He would have to get out a blow dryer every morning and heat up the distributor cab before it would start. Well, his day started at six o'clock in the morning, so it was wintertime and he was getting pretty grumpy at his situation, complaining about his car, praying to the Lord, come on, Lord, give me a new car. Can't you see how hard this is? And then one day the Lord said to him, Tom, why aren't you thankful for this car? You could be without one. Well, he decided to turn his attitude around and stop complaining and started giving thanks. And thanks that he could get to college and work. Thanks that he had a hair dryer and the power to get it out to the car to make it work. And it wasn't long before the attitude of acting and practicing thankfulness began to work on his heart. And you know what? Then God gave us a new car. But Tom never forgot his lesson. It wasn't a lesson about the car. It was a lesson about his choice, his choice of his attitude to complain or to look for things to give thanks. And that was medicine for his soul. Laughter is another medicine. And you probably know the verse in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. You know, I'm always amazed and encouraged how the medical world can find things that confirm scripture. Sometimes I think they're kind of slow catching up, but they have proven that in, endorphins produced by laughing are good for the body and the mind. And God knew that. Matter of fact, he designed that. Proverbs 15, 13 says, a merry heart uh, maketh a cheerful countenance. So laughter and happiness are good for us, good for our inner man. And so why go around with a long face? God designed laughter to relieve pain, to reduce stress, and to improve our sense of well-being. Isn't that amazing? And you know, tears do the same thing. So don't be afraid to laugh and cry. It's good medicine. And finally, love is medicine. Oh, how a hug makes us feel better, doesn't it? And a kind deed just speaks to our hearts and a loving word can lift our spirits. We need these things and we need to be actively doing these things for others as well. You know, love transcends all. It believes all. It hopes all. It endures all things. We read that in 1 Corinthians 13. And God's love is the greatest of all. His love can change the whole situation and plant new hope in our hearts. We need that love. We need to put our arms around it and embrace it. So since we've been talking about self-care, it might be wise for us to look back again and see what God has provided for the healing of our souls. Today we looked at food and rest, movement, gratitude, laughter, and love. 
So what if you started with just a few of these things, adding them to your life, just taking a spoonful each day? How would your life change? What blessing might come your way? And how would your perspective or your outlook improve? God knows a lot about self-care. So take time to implement these medicines. See what happens to your inner man. I'll see you next week. Thank you.